that. Um, I come from a land down under. I'm dual Australian-American. I was born in Australia that my parents are American. This uh, is a magnificent panorama of Byron Bay from the easternmost point of Australia. That uh, Byron Bay, it's world famous as a premier surf resort. It's probably one of the best surf resorts in the world. And uh, I've been living in Byron Bay since 2005. Yes, there is the occasional shark there, but that's a, a, another story for another day. But I was reading a how-to guide to PowerPoints, and they said you have to start your presentation with a splash of color. So uh, this is setting the tone for my presentation. That for me, I've taken to calling myself a robo-psychologist. I do have a degree in psychology that uh, I did work in travel and tourism for 20 years, though. My main background uh, in technology is having a computer science professor for a father. Though one of my chief claims to fame is uh, writing the first book about travel information on the internet in 1994. Briefly, that my meta guide project is uh, to create a dynamically learning semantic conversational agent. I'm calling it a conversational expert system for the travel and tourism vertical. One of my baselines is that I want the agent to be able to teach me things. And that's one of the limitations I have with AIML, for instance, because it has to be hand-tooled. That I'm calling AIML uh, artisanal because it takes so much uh, investment of time and energy that I've probably spent much of the past five years just looking at tools. And every time that I decide on a platform or a configuration, then the technology changes and it, and it continues to churn. So that um, I'm calling my uh, open chatbot standards for modular chatbot framework, you can construe it as much as a call for help as anything else. Open. An open standard is a standard that's publicly available. Open really as an example of what's not open. Siri is not an open standard. Watson is not an open standard. Open standards, they don't have to be formal, but they can be just de facto standards that are just accepted and agreed upon. You know, what do open standards mean for chatbots? That I believe, I sincerely believe, that open standards is going to help kickstart the AI economy. And I think that would be right on time about now. Modularity. Open standards means non-proprietary standards. Modularity is a design technique for software composed of interchangeable components. This is something I'm going to go back to throughout this talk. That, um, what I'm really focusing on here is the Legoization of cloud robotics. It's the umbrella of cloud robotics. I'm going to show how chatbots fits into this cloud, coming cloud robotics scenario. Modular chatbot frameworks will help to enfranchise a broader base of users. So this Legoization is about getting more people involved because I'm pretty convinced that everybody eventually is going to want their own personalized, customized Siri or Watson, for instance. Frameworks. A software framework provides a generic functionality that can be selectively changed by users. We were talking about frameworks last night. And a framework can be literally thought of as a frame. And the frame provides relativity that a software framework is actually, it's a structure that contains libraries that are customizable by users. Okay, and the way that I'm putting this in the context of cloud robotics is that I think instead of being competitive, we can be more cooperative by, you know, having interoperability and that everybody can build on everybody else's work and then the end users can get more satisfaction from having more personalized, customized solutions in the end. 
This is actually this is my favorite picture of the whole presentation because for me that just like says it all, the square peg in the round hole. How do we connect to what each other is doing so that we can be interoperable and build, build on each other's stuff? A technical standard is an established norm or requirement about technical systems. It can be a formal document that establishes uniform engineering or technical criteria, methods, processes, and practices. Otherwise, a custom convention company product corporate standard, which becomes generally accepted and dominant, is called a de facto standard. Technical standards can be developed privately or unilaterally, for example, by a corporation, regulatory body, military, etc. Standards can also be developed by groups such as trade associations. Standards organizations often have diverse input and often develop voluntary standards. The standardization process can be by edict or may involve formal consensus of technical experts. One thing I've noticed that too many people entering this arena try to reinvent the wheel from scratch without any regard for interoperability. For one developer or entrepreneur or even small and medium-sized enterprises to compete with a Siri or Watson is simply not in the cards at the moment. However, if we were better able to build on each other's accomplishments, then the end users would be empowered with the tools for modular programming, systems integration, and ultimately rapid application development. I saw something really interesting lately that there's a lot of talk about 3D printers and about downloading objects. Well, somebody developed this system of adapters for children's toys, like the 10 most popular children's toys, whatever, Legos, Tinker Toys, Lincoln Logs, whatever. But they invented this set of adapters where you could connect them all together so children could make much more things because they could they could combine the different toys. This is something like a mashup, a mashup for toys. But people talk about an open source ethic or philosophy on the internet. Well the mashup ethic or philosophy is a similar movement and it's been postulated to represent a generation of mashup artists who mix and mash culture. And we can see this particularly illustrated with electronic music, because electronic music is very mixed. You know, um, this conference is a very good platform. There's a lot of significant developers here. But chatbots.org is also another good community to spearhead standards works, not least because of its international nature. You know, not to mention, uh, it's now making headway bringing industry players on board at chatbots.org. Robotics, cloud robotics. There's been really a lot of talk about robotics kind of rescuing the economy, saving the American automobile industry. You know, I think that chatbots and AI are directly in line to be involved in this cloud robotic scenario. And that means that robotic intelligence mediated in the cloud and going from virtual robots to physical robots. And not only physical robots, but things, the Internet of Things, are also going to need the conversational user interface that someone was calling the CUI last night. I hadn't heard that before. We know that artificial intelligence and conversational interfaces are a major part of robotics, whether virtual or physical robots. Now with the advent of cloud robotics, the distinction between the two will blur even more. There can be little doubt about the direction automation is moving and the need to stimulate the economy and to help people increasing. I'm reminded here of the current IBM slogan, let's build a smarter planet. So what am I talking about? What, how is this gonna, gonna stimulate the economy? We're talking about monetization. 
How are we going to monetize? We're talking about growing the industry. We're talking about expanding the industry. It's not that I'm saying I'm, we should encourage robots. I'm not even saying that robots are good. But it will happen. It's going to happen. Um, so let's make the best of it. One thing I've noticed is that there's are almost no APIs for dialogue systems available on the web. And the whole thing about this programmable web and the year of the API, like this is really something that's going to get big. And an API is basically a programmatic interface as opposed to a simple user interface. Because people are going to be, they're going to be mixing and mashing even more when they're making apps and, and all kinds of uh, applications. For example, somebody will spend maybe years developing a personality on Pandora bots, for instance. So how are they going to monetize this? You know, I suggested last night that with a, with a meterable API that could, people could monetize even their Pandora bots. And that would be a dialogue system API, of which there's not very many. And one thing that I've seen is that you can layer different APIs, and in fact, different dialogue systems. And that's another form of mashup, and you could come up with a completely new thing. For instance, two or three of you could have virtual personalities developed on Pandora bots, for instance. But if I could layer those, with APIs, then I could cre create something completely new by, by moods, because if there was a mood, I could send it into that, into that bot. Or if it was a different mood, it could send it into that bot. And then come up with, you know, or, or even just rotate the responses, one, two, three, and just keep rotating to get different ones. And so from different bots. And so then I come up with, with a new personality. I leveled the critique last night that as brilliant and pioneering as Pandora Bots is, that really the API is not well documented. That if you just simply go out online and look at half a dozen APIs and see how they're documented, that, that some kind of, of standardization will emerge from that. And also business plans that Mostly what I'm seeing now is three-tier pricing structure, like McDonald's, small, medium, and large, and you know, a clear definition of what, what your product is and how much it costs. Open standards mean non-proprietary standards. I'm a big fan of XMPP. Some people think XMPP is going downhill, because one thing that happened recently is IMified is shutting down. And IMified was an interface for XMPP chatbots to different systems. And it's, it was, they say that they're unique. They say everybody says, well, what's the alternative to IMified? And IMified doesn't have an alternative yet. They haven't come up with one. But XMPP, is, people have used it a long time to talk to each other. Instant messaging is based on XMPP. And most chatbots interface at some point with XMPP. So I believe in the future, it's how are machines going to talk to machines? Maybe they'll talk to each other the same way we talk to each other. We talk to each other via, via instant messaging text. Why shouldn't machines be able to talk to each other via instant messaging text? Identification. <laughs>